criança. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, you are rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. And you made your nomi and son. It's not someone who said, Radi, Negwan, Chef, four pan. A Radini, me, Chef, four, she ring here, me, or Mammy, dear reference from Eddie Dibia, or Jammy Consu, and Hojo, or to Jommy Cra, or the Mifa Pantry, and so Nidinti, and so Minam, or Wusum, Bomu, ah, means Robon Ebi. If you say, or Nimmy, and a Waho, Waba, no Puma, and a Chicha Mirre, or told me Puma, town for any more than for me, trim. Me kuruwa eye mebuso iye ni adoye nko ne be di mechi me nkwa na nyina na metena radi fie da amen the bible says that god has provided us with everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness tro no se onyankopon edi ne me nyina tutu akwan mu amaye eye ne aye hia de and because of that, every child of his is expected to be content with God's provision. And so if you look at Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, and I take it from the Message Bible. It says that everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know Him personally and intimately. And the one who invited us to God. Yeah. Senia, Nina, Coupon, Fama, or Dinny, near my a far unqua, and in your son, Pahunina, Achaye, near or num, and your yam, any many years so afraid, no honim, dear mu. And that he continued to say that God has given us the best invitation that we have ever received. Na si ya kaso bi tu nsa afrewa nsa ya tu freno ni anko pondi ya o tu freno no eno di esne nuko wa. And so because of that, every one of us go to Him and we go to God with contentment. Na enti yemu ni na yemu na yekwa ne ni ma yadi akuma pa anase senya aye wa ye ya freno eni yadi ko iradi eni. As God's children, many of us, we've always been reciting Psalm 23, and we know it, and we have taught it, and this morning, I want us to look at Psalm 23 in a very different way. God, God wants every one of us to have a contented heart. And contentment comes from our experience with God as a good shepherd. And so there's some 23 is 
asking us to experience contentment that comes from God who happens to be our good shepherd. Experiencing contentment that comes from God. Many children of God are fretting. Many of us, our souls and hearts are gradually coming out from us because of lack of contentment. We are not good. We are not content with what we have. We are not content with our businesses. We are not content with the things that God has given to us, even in our house. There are a lot of areas many of us are not content. But if we call ourselves as God's children, then God expects us to be content in every area. Of Maybe you are asking. So what is contentment? According to a Victoria Encyclopedia of the Bible, it says contentment is the state of being content. I continue to say that every believer, every child of God is expected to be content. And it goes with our godliness. And so if we say we are godly, then it means that we also have to be content. This encyclopedia says that contentment is the state of mind and heart which arise out of grace induced awareness that underneath our love in the everlasting arms of the heavenly father. That the heavenly father cares for us. And, and if you know he cares for us. And we obey him. He will also show us every good thing. He is a good God. And David in the Psalm 23 compares our relationship with God as a sheep who has contented heart. And you see God as the good shepherd. As you are seated this morning, I don't know what you are going through. It may be 
a challenge or a problem concerning your health. It may be a challenge that has to do with your work. It may be something that you've been praying for that you are not getting. And As we go through this, uh, I want to describe some few steps that will help us to experience God. And this experience of God is, has to do with experiencing His content, that contentment that we will experience from Him. So that he will always continue to be our good shepherd. So we are looking at experiencing contentment that comes from God. And God knows that we can experience contentment that comes from Him. He expects every child of His to become content. We want to look at four steps in this psalm how we can experience contentment that comes from God. The first step is that we have to know the Lord as our good shepherd. And the first verse, the one says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So the first verse is talking about knowing the Lord as your shepherd. He is that he is my shepherd. So here in this verse, we are we know him personally. That talks about personal relationship. Now where the nature so You are not saying that the Lord is your shepherd, the Lord is the shepherd, or the Lord is shepherd. But the Lord is my, my, talking about me. personal relationship with Him. And so if you are here and you know Jesus and you have accepted Him as your Lord and personal Savior, then you know Him as your Savior. Jesus in John 10 25-28 is that my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give eternal life to them and they shall never perish. So according to Jesus here, he says that he knows us and we also know him and we also know his voice. Christ and when we hear his voice, we will know that this is the voice of the shepherd. So we are looking at the personal relationship and also we are also looking at the personal responsibilities given to us 
as God's children. He expects us to do something for him to feed us and for him to bless us. If we have that relationship with him, our responsibility is to hear his voice and follow him and obey him. One of the challenges that we have as God's people is that sometimes we don't want to hear him. And the, the major point here is that before we got to the Psalm 23, we had read the Psalm 22. The Psalm 22 is talking about the it's a messianic psalm that see Jesus as a messiah. He came and he sacrificed his life for us. And so we have to accept him, believing that he sacrificed his life for us, and that he will be our shepherd. Many a times our mouth can talk about the Lord is my shepherd. You can say it, but to see him becomes the problem. Oh, and so and to experience this type of contentment that God is asking us. The nature of the shepherd determines the welfare of the sheep. I don't know who is your shepherd. And I don't know who we can say with all confidence that the Lord is our shepherd. That when your needs are not met, when you are fretting, when you are going through trials, whether you will be able to stand up and shout and say that the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> It is said that a little girl who went to Sunday school and she was taught the Psalm 23 and so she was able to memorize the Psalm and uh, she went home and was trying to quote the Psalm. Now, for a bit of Sunday school, now you're trying to say, and you might be on me and say, no, we'll see you. So she got up and shouted, The Lord is my shepherd. I have got all that I want. Now, Now, she would think that yes, she has misquoted it. But actually, she's saying, Yes. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I want. 
Can you also say that? Anna wo beti mi akasa. Do you have all that you want? Who will be pia wo? Because of God. Can you shout? Anna wo beti mi atiemo. We are looking at experiencing God, His contentment. Yeshe erade se ano yesu yehuni se ano. The first step is to know him. The second step is to enjoy the good shepherd's gracious provision. Verse 2 and 3 say, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. O mame de ura from from a didi bia. O jame ko ensi a ho juo ho. O jujo me kra. O di me fa kwa ntre ni so ni di niti. He has granted us everything that we need. Iti ya mwa ane se ni ya ye hiya ni nara. Jeremiah 2, verse 13. Jeremiah 2, 13. It says, My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Now, Jeremiah, it's a name you know. Inchichemudumiyensanokase he being the spring of a living water, we are, we are telling him that we don't need him. And we have our own effort. We are digging our own well. Because we are this well we are digging says that there is no water. If you look at the verses 2 and 3, the psalmist is mentioning four things about God's provision. He's talking about the good shepherd provide spiritual food. Because he says that he makes me lie down in green pastures. Number two, he provides spiritual drink. He leads me beside quiet waters. Number three, he also provides spiritual restoration. Restores Number four, he also provides spiritual guidance. The spiritual food happens to be his word. God provides for us. Our major problem has to do with us. Many of us are not feeding on God's spiritual food. 
are feeding our minds with poisonous weeds that comes from the television, that comes from radio stations, that comes from movies, and that comes from magazines. That is supposed to feed us and make us grow. Oh, yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm We say we don't want it. And yeah. I keep asking, how much do you have his word inside you when you are going through trials? The, the sheep he said that the sheep chew the cat it means that you just go feed get the, the pasture then just take them and then goes away and whilst he's there alone then he will be mewing just chewing it Many of us, and, and my major problem has to do with that even the movies, on, on godly movies, they are the ones that talk to us. And we learn our lessons when we go through trials. He leads me beside quiet waters that provides the spiritual drink for us. And a sheep cannot be content if it is thirsty. And when you are thirsty, nothing can replace it. No beverage, no mineral, nothing. And I, I don't know whether I was, I've said it here before that one time I got missing with my the daughter, my daughter Mafia when she was a little girl and we got missing and when at the point she said daddy water and I got through the place and there was no water so I just bought a calipo and I thought that it would be able to after she drank the calipo we were just going to say daddy water Water. So the calipo, what, what you come to? No, sir. The water, that is the word of God. The spiritual drink is the provision that God has given to us. Unfortunately, many of us have gone astray. And we are drinking, drinking port waters, gutter waters, contaminated water. We don't want the pure water on a dotreated word of God. We don't want it. And so the water that we 
will get from the potholes, the contaminator with the gutters, may at a point will do a little bit of satisfaction, but may not help us. The sheep can stray. Even though the good shepherd will be there. E wo mo se odwan hwefo papa e wo ho na se to da bia na odwan yi ayira kwan e ko ba bi fofro. And when you stray that's why that he will come and chase you and look for you and when you have got back that's why he restores your soul. Na odwan yi awa yira kwan ana wa twe ne ho kakra yi odwan hwefo no onya no na mo mo di na chi kwoshoshe no na onya na no asan e de na ba eno ni with his word and with the people that are gathered in his house. And that spiritual guidance that talks about he will guide us in the path of righteousness. I don't know where you are. I don't know what we are going through. But God wants you to experience his contentment. And the first step has to do with knowing God as your shepherd. Number two, you have to enjoy his gracious provision. Number three, you have to walk with the good shepherds through the hard times. Even the hard times even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me you are rod and your staff they comfort you you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you are not my head with oil and my cup overflows. Here we see three types of trials here. Times of fear. God will walk with us. His presence will be with us. And his shepherd, this shepherd, the rock and the staff will still comfort us. In times of conflict, even in the presence of enemies, God will be there with us. Times of irritation, he will oil us. When we are being irritated, irritated, God will oil us. You anoint my head with oil. When everybody is afraid, when you don't know what to do, God will be with us. There is fear in the environment. There is fear in your home. The news is not good. In the hard times, he will work with us. He will not leave us alone. I pray always have to know him. Amen. Amen. Remember, we are talking about experiencing
contentment that comes from God. This contentment, number one, is, is for us to know the Lord as our shepherd. Number two, we have to enjoy his gracious provision. And this provision has to do with food, drink, restoration, and guidance. Number three, we have to walk with him through the hard time. One of the things, and I yeah. keep saying this, that even when things are hard, that's the time you have to come to church. It's when you are confused, that's the time you have to come to church. When you don't know what to do, that is the time you have to come to church. Don't stay home when you are troubled. Last week, I, I heard a story of one of my nice ladies in this church. She was troubled. And because of the trouble, she didn't come to church. And I, I, when I heard it, I was a little bit sad. Don't do that. If you are the one and you know it, please don't do that. And if you too don't do that. In times of trouble, in times of pain, in times of confusion, when you think that God is not answering your prayers, the best place to be and the fourth step has to do with see God's goodness in every situation in every situation see that God is good he said surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here we see the assurance of goodness and we see the assurance of love. I keep saying that to, for, for us to talk about the love of God, we are talking about the combination of God's mercy and his grace. Yeah, what are you going through? What are you hearing? What is pursuing you? What is chasing you? In the matters of God. God says that he knows you can experience contentment. Don't run away from him. The Bible says that what shall separate us from the love of God? Nothing. In times of trouble. When you are confused. When you are sick. When you are awake, it's not doing well. When it appears that death wants to swallow you up. Continue to stay strong. Know that the Lord is your shepherd. Number two, enjoy the gracious provision that comes from God. 
Number three, walk with him even in his heart. He has no promise that he will airlift us. He will lift us up above the troubles. No, but in the midst of the troubles, there be and see God's goodness in every situation. Now I fear my things works together for our good. May the Lord bless you. May He comfort you. May he be your good shepherd. May he strengthen you. And may he be gracious unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we bow down hands? I want you to talk to him. That I will be content with you. I will not allow anything to separate me from the house. I would forever dwell in the house of the Lord. Talk to him. Thank you for who you are. You are good God. Even in trouble, you are still with us. In our sicknesses, in our pain, emotionally, you still remain our God. We thank you. Please, if you are here and you are sick in any part of your body, I want you to be on your feet. Mr. Wa, who are Hana, who are baby, Fawa, Sorigina, and the Pedia baby, and Fawa, Sorigina. Just put your hand over there. And ask him that healing is the bread of the children. Father, you know what we are going through. We are your children. We have come. We didn't stay at home even in all our pain. We have come because we know that you are a miracle worker. You will touch us and you will heal us. Lord, heal us. Thank you, Father. We we'll give you all the glory. From the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. We dip ourselves in your blood. Lord, deliver us from trouble. Continue to be our shepherd. We bless you, Father. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Please be seated and God bless you.